You're watching CCN, Clarksville Community Network, produced by Goodwin Productions. Powered by CDE Lightband. Hi, my name is Mike Andrews. I'm an art teacher, a, a father, grandfather, and from time to time an artist. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a sculptor. Always fun to go out into the studio and work. The studio is about 100 yards from my house. So I don't have a very long commute. I'm out in the country. I'm inspired by nature. I'm inspired by my family. I'm just really a lucky person. I enjoy what I do. I love to work with clay. Clay is an additive method of sculpture and it's just very fun. If you make a mistake, you can fix it quickly and easily. Stone is probably my favorite medium. I like to use Indiana limestone. It's a medium hard stone. It, it, it's a very simple stone, so you don't have to worry about the different colors and striations in the stone. You can make a complicated design and it works out really well. I had a show at uh, Customs House Museum recently. For the past two, three years, I've been working diligently trying to get a body of work together for it. A lot of what I was doing in that show was honoring my former professor, mentor, Olin Bryant. He passed away a little over a year ago, and he's just been such an inspiration to me and my family. The show is basically honoring him and what he's taught me over the years. I did a few pieces that were really kind of inspired by him. In the beginning or the entryway of the show, there's a piece that I call Gross Mama, which means grandmother. Olin made these wonderful ladies, you know, heavy set ladies that, that are just so gorgeous. And um, I wanted to do something like that kind of in his memory. And that's what that centerpiece is about. As I was making it, thought about Olin, but I also thought about my grandmother who I love dearly. And so that's where the title came from, my gross mother, my grandmother. The show is mostly new work. Figurative kind of sculptures, they're actually simple abstractions of figurative people. And that was kind of what Owen was doing, and, and I, I wanted to honor that and be true to the material just like he was. The work of people like Mike are very influenced with this uh, craft. His work demonstrates these uh, sympathetic philosophies where these principles of the material, the qualities of the material and the process become a part of the result. That somehow it's not 
an independently intellectual thing. These concepts and the crafting seem to come together in a very obvious kind of way. One reason why sculpting was so attractive to me is because it was so physical. After a good day of carving, after a good day of working, you feel like you've got something accomplished. If you did it right, you're tired and exhausted and sore. And I enjoy that. It was it's like a workout for me. Sculpting has been something that's been in my blood and will always be in my blood. I try to spend a little bit of time in my studio every day, no matter what, even if I don't produce anything. But most of the time, when I'm there, it'll spark something, and then something will happen. Who knows, that little 15 minute might end up being two, three, four hours. Well, I think this, his focus has been this carving, subtractive process, and for some reason he developed this sympathy for stone and that stone process. I think he's a fine sense of design and all, most of his things are very good, but occasionally he does something that is so special and so particular that it's, it's kind of amazing. Many times it has this extra element that is not exactly definable, and it's very compelling. And he's always sort of gone his, his own way. It's the fact, this imagination, that this take a piece of ordinary material and it becomes that. So that is a clue that it is particular, that it has special characteristics. because he's very independent in some ways, but by nature, he's a very generous and very cooperative personality, but he, can, he brings these things into focus and into balance. And to me, that is the most appealing aspect of his life and his, the way he works and the way he deals with work. He understood that I was passionate about what I was doing and so he kind of took me under his wing and uh, I worked for him for 10 years as a studio assistant. My son worked for him for the last 10 years of his life as a studio assistant and um, he just always supported me. It's been a great ride. I've made metal sculptures, I love to weld. I love working with uh, patterns. I 
was lucky enough to know Charlie Faust. I've known Charlie Faust for a long time and I knew his dad. And, um, his dad started collecting patterns and he let me into his foundry and his uh, stock. I, I made some wonderful pattern pieces. The patterns are basically wooden forms that they used to impress into sand where they would make a mold and then they would pour the metal into the negative space that the pattern left in the sand. So most of these things were made 100 years ago by you know, these incredible craftsmen. I cannot imagine what kind of skill it took for them to be able to make what they made. Just about everything that you see in, uh, that's made out of metal, they have to make some kind of pattern. And in the foundry's case, most of them are made out of wood. I'm taking something that was used to mass produce metal objects and I'm taking that original pattern and I'm using that and repurposing it to make art. Charlie and his dad were collecting these beautiful patterns for over 40 years. One day he asked me, he said, can you make something for me? I want something nice in my house. I put this design together for him and it just worked out perfectly. It's an incredible piece. It's about 16 feet in his house. So it's all made out of wood, all made out of patterns that came from the foundry. Like I said, these things are magical pieces that were created by old world craftsmen. It's just really an honor to be able to put these things together. When I found the piece of rock that I made Iron John out of, it was just such a beautiful slab of stone. As I was driving home with that piece of rock in the back of my truck, I was thinking about what I wanted to do. Iron John kind of uh, had a bunch of evolutions. He was originally considered modern man. And if you'll notice, in his right hand, he has a key. The key was made at the foundry, and then in his chest, he's got an exposed heart. And that's made out of iron. That was also made at the foundry. And I gave him the, the wild hair. I put him in a show for the School of the Blind, and I had all these little holes drilled in it, and those holes had pins in them, and it was almost like braille, and it told a story about, you know, modern man. You have the key to your own destiny, that kind of thing. When the kids from the School of the Blind came, they couldn't actually read it, on the sculpture, they could read it on the nameplate. And so I was a little disappointed with that. The piece is so textural, and I love the texture. I love the texture of stone. They weren't able to read the, the pins that I put in because the whole project was too textural. I, I kind of changed it again. It just evolved. That's when, you know, you're, you're in the zone. You know, you're letting things tell you what needs to be done. And so Iron John just kind of evolved that way. I 
I had it up at my studio for years and years, and whenever anybody would come over, they would go, who's that watching me? Oh my goodness, uh, Mine Within the Heart was an amazing project. Um, I had some really wonderful people helping me with that, Chris Barrara and, and Rick Goodwin and his crew. Uh, Chris put together the narration for me and I thought he did just a beautiful job. The film was about the process of making a sculpture and so I, I started out with a, a design, a little model, and um, then we went from the beginning to the end of the process of carving the sculpture. And uh, it was amazing. I'm right there in the process of making it. Well, seeing that process from a different point of view was really kind of interesting to me. And um, I think it was quite successful. It's an amazing show. I hope you all enjoy it. In the garden next to the studio, behind a home in Cunningham, Tennessee, are stone and wood sculptures and clay and metal castings of an artist who has worked for over 30 years to capture visually what may be called the mind within the heart. In all of Mike Andrews' work, we come to understand how a handmade object can extend our perceptions beyond our own immediate response to the work of art itself and lead us to a deeper intuitive sense of our connections to each other and to nature. Andrews, like the modernist masters Constantine Brancusi, Isamo Noguchi, and Louise Nevelson, allows process, attention to detail, and intuition to guide him in shaping his works of art. Andrews begins every project by creating a concept model. He then methodically removes the negative space, bringing forward the essential form of the object. At this stage, where process encounters expression, the piece is born but incomplete. What ensues are hours of filing, chipping, and sanding. Time, Andrew says, stops and falls away. The analytical mind no longer dominates here, and the mind rests within the expansive space all great artists enter into, where there is a rhythm called flow. The results, as Olin Bryant says of Andrew's work, need no words to appreciate them. Bryant knows of what he speaks. Bryant is an award-winning master artist, a Tennessee treasure who attended Cranbrook Academy for the Arts and distinguished emeritus professor of art and whose work resides in the most prestigious collections in the country. Bryant's parents and family worked as sharecroppers first in Cookville and then near Lebanon, Tennessee. Despite the critical acclaim for his work, Bryant's inspiration has always been to stir and communicate the message of joy and solace to the unschooled viewer. Those people who, like his kin, work to struggle to make ends meet and do not have the time to visit galleries or museums. Now 87, Bryant continues to produce artworks in his home studio in rural Cottontown, Tennessee. In his mind, the aesthetic and audience are intertwined and are rooted to his home place. Well, I don't think anybody can look at his work and the first thing that you're 
perception is, is he's an incredible craftsperson. His skill is very, very obvious to anyone, even the untrained. For some people, some of his design, some of his images become a little bit more esoteric or they're not very clear, but you may respond or you may suspect that there's more to these designs than you think or you understand. And that's imagination or that's appeal. I immediately uh, feel that there's something very uh, Asian in his, his philosophy about life and, and work and these kind of things. And I think even for outsiders, there is this kind of uh, uh, mystical or kind of mysterious uh, aspect that is very apparent. Uh, that's, that's my perception of his work. I don't think anyone could look at these things and not feel that these things are created with a great deal of taste, a great deal of skill, a great deal of imagination, and usually there's a big chunk of this ingredient X. You may not be able to identify it, but I think you're, you sense that it's there. A number of these people immediately uh, react that way. They don't quite understand it, but they sense that there is something there that is very particular, and they kind of re appreciate that. And I think that when they encounter this man, they appreciate that these qualities that they see and these objects are apparent in the personality as well. As with his teacher, Olin Bryant, Andrews's own works of art express mind meeting mind outside of words, but within the heart. Andrews's home place is in fact the heart, the human condition. Each work a gesture of equipoise, freedom, and peace that stands in counterpoint to the self-conscious mannerisms of most contemporary art. To me, ever since I started, certain material, certain media, kind of dictates what it is that I need to make up from it. Um, with stone carving and wood carving, uh, because of the, the process is so slow and laborious, you really want to kind of uh, start out with some plans, or I do anyway. And um, so it's really kind of tight. You, um, you, have a, you have a vision, you have an idea, you, you start out with a model, um, and then you try to follow that to the best of your ability. And then eventually I get to a point where I'm like, okay, this is the concept, the idea, and now it's the stone's turn to kind of dictate what, it needs, what needs to be done. And then, so what I'll do is I'll kind of work with the, the stone. My approach to sculpture is, it's intuitive. Uh, I, I like to have a lot of things going on at, at one time. If I come to like a, a wall or, or if, if something's not working right for me, then the best thing for me to do is to just back off from that and then go to another project. And so, generally speaking, I'll have many different projects going on at any particular time. And then another thing that, um, that I really kind of enjoy is when I'm working on one project, I'm kind of working out ideas for other projects. And so it's, it's a constant evolution. It's like a, a snowball, you know. It, you just start something and then it, it leads to another something and it leads to another something and, and it just makes it a lot of fun. <laughs> I've always been interested in art history and being a teacher, an educator, I, I teach a lot of art history. And so I, I have a pretty good knowledge of, uh, well, art through the ages. And if you had to kind of label what I do, it, it, it seems to me to be a kind of a modern kind of uh, style. I, I wouldn't consider myself contemporary. A lot of uh, the artists that came about in the 
you know, the, the early 20th century, mid 20th century. And those are the ones that kind of speak to me. And so that's, I think, a, a lot of the aesthetic that uh, my work kind of has, is that modern kind of approach. You know, I, I had a, a wonderful mentor in Olin Bryant. And one of the things that I really took away from him was staying true to the material. And so I don't want to in any way destroy what those materials or what those pieces are. I want to use them as true to what, how I got them, okay? I, I don't want to uh, make them anything that they aren't. So I, I generally don't like to paint them. I uh, clean them up a little bit, but they're special to me. I want to keep them that way. The artworks of Mike Andrews reflect the confidence found only in one whose mind and body work in harmony with disciplined imagination within play, which allows him to intuit and express the unspoken of the human experience in original works. All of Mike Andrews' sculptures reflect back to us what we instinctively know but have forgotten and ultimately reveal the enlightened heart. I thank all of my patrons and all of the people that have supported me throughout the years. I've got so many good friends and so many wonderful patrons and uh, I've really had a good run with this and, uh, and I hope to have many decades more so I can create more things. and exclusive content subscribe to cde lightband connecting you at the speed of light